In this video, we're going to talk about confidence intervals. We're going to learn how to calculate the margin of error, and we're going to discuss how to interpret confidence intervals. Now, before we get too far into the question, um, we need to look at, well, what is a confidence interval? So typically we'll see statements that says we're 95% confident in this result, plus or minus a certain percent. And really what this means is that the analyst is saying we are 95% confident that the true proportion lies in our specified inter interval. So you're going to have some estimate plus or minus some margin of error. So the margin of error is the extent of the interval on either side of the proportion of your sample is called the margin of error. And this will make sense in a second. So let's first talk about what is this, how do we calculate the confidence interval? So when we're looking at our confidence interval, we have a basic equation that looks like this. It's um, our estimate plus or minus our ME, otherwise known as our margin of error. And to calculate our margin of error, all we're going to use is the following equation. That is Z star times the square root of the proportion of our sample minus Q of our sample divided by N. <clears throat> and remember that um, this is effectively the standard error of the proportion of our sample is equal to the square root of P hat times Q hat divided by N, right? We'll recall that from other videos where we looked at um, standard error. Z star, on the other hand, is our critical value of Z, and this will be a constant, and this critical value of Z is determined by the percent of confidence that we're putting in our confidence interval. And hopefully after a few minutes and working through a few examples, this will make a little bit more sense to you. So let's go ahead and dive into our first question. So suppose we surveyed a thousand adult Canadians about reform to the Canadian Football League, that's the CFL, and 34% answered yes to the question, do you support merging the CFL with the NFL? Then we're asked to construct a 95% confidence interval for the proportion. So let's break this question down into a few steps. So we know what the proportion of our sample is. Our P hat is equal to 0 0.34, right? That's given to us in our question. By default then, we know that Q hat is equal to one minus P hat. So this is equal to one minus 0 0.34, which is equal to 0 0.66. We also know our sample size, N is equal to 1000, right? <clears throat> Now, in previous videos, we calculated the standard error of the proportion of our sample, so we can go ahead and do just that. So our standard error of the proportion of our sample is equal to the square root of P hat times Q hat divided by N. Now, let's just pause for a moment and ask ourselves, why are we calculating the standard error and not the standard deviation? Well, we weren't told the standard deviation of our population, so as a result, we're going to refer to the standard error. So we just, we can make this a little bit bigger, is equal to the square root of 0 0.34 times 0 0.64 divided by our sample size, which is 1000. So this becomes the square root 0 0.34 times 0 0.66 gives us 0 0.2244 divided by 1,000 square root. So divided by 1,000. Um, this gives us quite a small decimal point, so I won't put it in there. We'll take the square root of that, and what we get is a value here of 0 0.0149. Seven, nine, nine. So why don't we keep this to four decimal points? And we'll say 0 0.1498. Okay. 
right? Fair enough. <clears throat> so we have our standard error. Now we need to calculate our confidence interval. So our equation for our confidence interval is the following. Our estimate plus or minus our margin of error. Well, our so then we have our estimate, which is the proportion of our sample, 0 0.34, plus or minus Z star times the standard error of the proportion of our sample. So the big question is, is what does this value for Z star equal? And as I said before, we determine the value of Z star depending on our level of confidence that we're looking for. In this case, we're looking for a 95% confidence interval. Now, let's just pause for a second and think about, can we use a normal distribution here? So we can check our assumptions and our conditions. We remember doing this in other types of questions. So. A thousand Canadians is certainly less than 10% of all Canadians. Our success and failure, so our n times p, n times p greater than or equal to 10, well, yes. n times q greater than or equal to 10, yes. And we're going to assume that there was some level of randomization and independence in our answers. So as a result, we can use our normal distribution. So our normal distribution, just as a reminder, our standard normal curve looks like this. And what we're saying when we're constructing a 95% confidence interval is we're saying that with 95% certainty, the true proportion uh, lies within our interval, meaning that we need to do this symmetrically, so 0 0.25 in one tail and 0 0.025 in the other tail. So what we can then look up is we can go to our Z table and we can look up either one of these values, really, it doesn't truly matter, but we'll look up uh, the Z score that has a positive value. So that is we're looking for the Z score associated with this area to the left. So this would be one minus 0 0.025, which is equal to 0 0.975, right? In other words, this is the probability that Z is greater than or equal to some specified value here of X. And this is the area that would be to the left of this value. So we're going to go to our Z table, and we're going to look up 0 0.975. So when we look up 0 0.975, oh, we see it right here. And what do we get? Whoops. We see that we get a Z score of 1.96. So 1.96 becomes our Z critical. So Z star is equal to 1.96. So 0 0.34 plus or minus 1.96 times our standard error, which we've already identified is 0 0.01498. So 1.96 times 0 0.01498. So 0 0.34 plus or minus 0 0.02936. We'll store that value in our calculators for easy reference. So now all we have to do is write our confidence interval. So our confidence interval looks like this. So 0 0.34 minus 0 0.02936 gives us 0 0.3106 and 0 0.34 plus 0 0.2936 gives us 0 
three, six, nine, four. We'll round four decimal points. And there you have it. We have our confidence interval established. So this would represent the 95% confidence interval around this particular question. That's it for this video, but if you found that it helped make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.